So I do apologize for that. Totally my fault. Hello, everybody. Come on in. Welcome to Happy Tuesday. I'm delighted to be joined by David and Whitney Scott. Sorry about the delay there. It was totally our fault. David and Whitney have been waiting for ages, and we just realized that we made an absolute bags of it. We forgot to send panelist links, but we're here now, so we're delighted to have them. So come on in, say hello. Um, and I'm going to go on, while I'm going to go over to Facebook, David and Whitney, and just make sure we stream okay. live into Insiders too. So what I'm doing that, why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Because I'm sure everyone knows you already, right? But just for those who don't, no. just tell us a little bit about you, where you're based, um, and I'll be back in two moments. Sure. All right. Well, I don't think everyone knows us because who would want to know us? We're just a couple of middle-aged people in the middle of Arkansas. And well, You're I'm getting doing such a good job with this introduction. <laughs> I'm selling us hard here. We are David and Whitney Scott. We are based in Bentonville, Arkansas, Northwest Arkansas. Fayetteville, the University of Arkansas is here, as well as a few other large uh, corporations you may have heard of. Uh, in the United before. States. Yeah, we're in yeah. the United States. You can tell by the accent, I guess. Right. Um, goodness, we have, we're, like I said, middle-aged old people trying to... Okay, let me take this over for okay. a second. So, <laughs> we've been working together as, as a husband and wife team for going on, what, 14 years 14 now? 14 years. Full-time. Yeah. Um, this is a second career for both of us. We photograph primarily uh, portraits, family, seniors. We do commercial work because we are in the home of Walmart. Mm -hmm. uh, we no longer photograph weddings because now there it is because we are getting older. And yeah. I discovered on wedding days, I was doing like a hundred squats in a day and my, my poor thighs just couldn't handle it. So, <laughs> Is that what you wanted, Ronan? <laughs> Absolutely. So just, just tell us though, just tell us, because this is a big year in your family, right? We have a graduation. Yes. Last week, we graduated our firstborn, our daughter from high school, and we're still going through all of that, that emotional yeah. stuff. And, and even this, this morning, um, I took her to the airport at 430 mm -hmm. this morning because she was two days late to her senior class trip. She, uh, she missed it because she was sick, not COVID related, but she got sick. And so we got her a shot in the bum and <laughs> sent her off and she's, she's well, and we're well, and the emotion has cleared the air in the house. Oh, and it's, it's, it's a tough. nice feeling. And we are practicing what we preach and we have her artwork up on our wall. So, <laughs> so yeah, big good. Yeah, we're, we're the same because um, our eldest is 29. So Susan was doing the calculation. Our youngest is finishing high school, graduating this year. And um, so it's 26 years and she hasn't had to do the school run. Wow. Wow. That's <laughs> a big change in your house. Yeah, she still has a so week and a half left. <laughs> <laughs> she still has a week and a half left. But we're sort of winding down. We're saying this is the second last Tuesday when this has to be done. Uh, <laughs> so this is why Susan has put you in a little closet to keep you away, keep your emotions in check. And yeah, I get it now. That's it. That's it. And, and um, you know, she's uh, um, Whitney, you love this because you did your I always get this wrong because I can never convert from Europe to the US. Right. But major uh, when you do your university mm -hmm. psychology. Right. So she. Yes. My, yes. Yeah. Just tell us a little bit about that, because I'm really interested. I tell you why, because Merlin has decided when she goes to university, she She's really math. She sees the world through math. So like she's scoring in the 90s and higher math, but she also loves politics and people and stuff like that. So there's a new course, a new university course they've designed in Dublin. Apparently, there's a gap between the companies who want people to analyze big data, but the ability to translate the numbers into language that marketing, sales and normal people understand. I just said that word, normal people. That's a real um, skill set. That's a so, right brain, left brain kind of crossover there. Yeah, so that's the degree she wants to do. And it's the first time they've put math and psychology together in Ireland for, for a degree course. So what do you think of that? Wow. wow. My, uh, my degrees are in psychology. I actually was a professional counselor before I got into photography. And I have found it to be very valuable in what we do. Just the ability to connect with people, mm -hmm. the ability to kind of um, get inside your client's head a little bit when it comes to marketing, uh, when it comes to pricing, a lot of we're interested in a lot of behavioral economics and how people approach 
their purchasing decisions. Um, and, you know, we've taught classes on psychology of pricing and sales, um, getting into the personality traits. We're actually working on a new class right now called Marketing for Introverts because we hear that all the time. Like, well, I'm an introvert, mm -hmm. so I don't like networking or I, I don't like making phone calls. I hear you, yeah. um, but there are a lot of great ways to play to your strength if you're an introvert and um, be great at marketing and great at connecting with clients. So, so I know you're an introvert, Whitney, right? Are you an introvert as well, David? Are you? Oh actually? yes. So I'm very much now an INFP. Yeah. Yeah. So we have three introverts. And welcome here. everyone. We <laughs> welcome all you extroverts out there. Welcome all you introverts. <laughs> so when we're done, we're going to crash. We're going to take a nap and drink some chamomile tea and just really chill out. Well, that's a big misconception. Is yeah. it, just because you're an introvert doesn't mean that you can't extrovert. Mm -hmm. It's about where you get your energy. Extroverts get energy from other people and from groups and being in situations like that. A psycho is what that right, is. Right, yeah, right. A psycho. Extroverts or introverts, this requires energy from us. This depletes us. We get our energy from being alone and recharging. So it's, it's not that we can't do it. It's that it's um, it just requires more of us. So I'm curious about this and, and you know, we're aligned to this. We've talked about this so often. But just tell me this. Is it true that extroverts talk more or is that not true? Yes. <laughs> well, well you, they are verbal processors typically. Yeah, typically. Introverts, we kind of think it all through in our heads and then it comes out our mouth. Extroverts have like a slide from their brain to their mouth. It just comes right out. And I know I, I was raised by extroverts. No, yes, you were. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> So, but so there's there's that there's that curve that is kind of the inverse effect that once an introvert gets to know you and feels comfortable mm -hmm. and feels like they're trusted or what they have to say is valuable and will be treated with respect, the floodgates open up mm -hmm. and they won't stop. Case in point, I kept right, going with we that. Can't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's really interesting because you know I love this area too, but I don't have your qualifications in this, so I just love to hear you know the experts speak about this stuff, you know, and deep dive into it. It fascinates me, fascinates me, because you, you know I remember. You're probably as educated as I am, knowing how much you enjoy researching all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, no, I definitely am not. I'm there. I take my cap off. To, no, 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 no. <laughs> you got a haircut, my friend. <laughs> oh, there we go. The, 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 the hairdressers and barbers opened two weeks ago. So my daughter said, <laughs> no, they bought, they actually booked me in. They said, uh, uh, we're not putting up with you any longer, dad. You're going because we were closed for five months. So wow. after last year, didn't quite go as long as last year, but it was starting to get long again. So they reckon it makes me look younger. I don't know. I think Photoshop does that, but they seem to think a haircut does it too. Um, but, but, but come here, let's, we're going to talk today about how you achieved a 5,000 average from a 4,000 average, right? So an extra thousand. Um, do you call it a thousand over there or grand or what's the American for that? Either one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, either one. Okay. Okay. Because I, I, you know, quite often when I'm talking to Americans, they talk about um, four, no, what is it? 4,400, which is 4,400, right? And I, I have to think about that. 4,400 sure. is 4,400. So I have to, I, ha I have to yeah. contemplate that. But a grand is a grand anyway, is it all throughout the world? It doesn't matter where we <laughs> right. are. Right, that's right. <laughs> okay, okay, good. So before we do that though, I just want to just, because obviously to get to that sales level, right? There is, you've got to align everything. You've got to align your marketing with your um, sales system, with your production system, with your financial system. So will we start at the beginning, right? And, and I know the story, so I'm going to lead you a certain direction. So you guys realized, you know, very, you figured out who your ideal client was. You know, it wasn't based on demographics and it wasn't based on all that stuff. It was based on something different. Can you talk to us about that? We were talking about this this morning. Did you want to no, no, start? No. Okay. No, let me because I, I think when when you start out, you try to build this avatar of what your ideal client is. We've been in business long enough that I said to David this morning, I said, I actually know who our ideal client is and I know her name because she is our client. And I think that makes it easier 
when you begin to make decisions about how you're going to market and how you're going to price and what products you're going to offer and all of those things to have that person in your mind. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're just starting out, yes, you have to create that person on paper. But when you've been in business long enough, you know who that person is. But having said that, we have been surprised so many times by so many people just just this past week, um, a sale from clients who I went to visit their home before. And I came back and I told David, wow, I mean, they don't live in a nice home at all. Um, but this was something they valued so highly for their family. And we choose where our money goes by what we value. But that's a really tough thing to market to. It's easier to say, okay, my clients shop at this store, my clients go to this art museum, my clients you know, have grown children, or all of those things. It's very hard to say my client values photography highly and how do I pinpoint who that is. But because of our process, we are able to um, take on some of those people that might not be our ideal client. And if they turn out not to be ideal, then they are weeded out by our process long before we get in the sales room. And I think part of that goes along with the brand. Uh, for this particular client that she's referring to, they were not our avatar. Um, the home that they lived in was a converted drug house, basically. <laughs> it, it, it was not fancy mm -hmm. by any stretch. They were working themselves to fix it up. Right. Yeah. But we've known it. them for seven years. We attended church with them. Mm -hmm. They've seen They've seen us as people, but they've also seen us as a brand that we've cultivated, typically online, but also in person. And that goes as far as how we dress, uh, how we communicate, um, how we choose to to talk to everyone. We're not, if you see us in a social setting, we're not with what people would call the in crowd. We're, we're talking with everyone because we know what it has felt like to be on the outside before. And we don't want others to feel that way, especially if we're involved in it in in any in any way so they've seen that brand and i think it's something that they've aspired to that i may not ever go back to them again but at least for this once this is something i'm going to save for and work towards and and acquire um, and we want to honor that and so we obviously treat them like we would treat any other client and perhaps even more because we understand just what a unique and special experience it's, it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And they were a $5,000 client. Crazy. So, mm -hmm. so talk to me then about the marketing side, right? So you've identified your, and you have that visualization of who your ideal client is. And there's obviously that connection with family among them, right? I know we all, we all value our family, right? But you've noticed that your clients have maybe a deeper connection with family. Can you just talk to us about how you identify that person is it in conversation you're good at that because you can probe into their head a lot better than i can yes this, i have to watch out for that in the marriage like wait <laughs> get out of my head oh babe you don't even know <laughs> i know that's the problem so um i i do get on an initial phone call with them and it's it's not really based on on trying to find out um, anything other than just to really connect. And I can tell from that phone call if, if we're going to connect. And it's also about getting them really excited about what we can create together and giving them the feeling that we can give them something that other photographers can't. Just really connecting on that level and feeling like, especially I was on a phone call with a senior mom yesterday just talking about um, what was important to her and how she wanted these pictures to not look like anybody else's and how we try to capture uh, the personality of the senior and talking about things we've done before and generating ideas right while we're on the phone saying, oh, you know what, we could do this or we could capture her like this or maybe she'd want to bring this. And, and that gets them involved and excited in the process. And so I can tell when they're starting to buy in um, and we're also building value through that before the next step. And as a tangent, for an introvert, that process is extremely difficult. You you really have to build up to it because introverts typically abhor small talk if there's no purpose behind it. And so 
asking those questions that seem very superficial actually serve a purpose. And if you can, as an introvert, get past that and realize, okay, what I'm doing is not small talk. There is a purpose behind this and it will reap the benefits. Then I, th I think it helps build up your confidence and your stamina to, to actually do it. Well, and this is a strength of introverts is connecting. And I've mm -hmm. found this year has been the easiest year I've ever had with connecting with uh, senior moms because I am a senior mom. So we immediately have that connection and I relate to how important this is and how much this is an experience that they want to give their kids and that they want to share with them. It's not just about the pictures. Yeah. And when I can take it to that deeper level and make it about something more meaningful than just an image on the wall, um, it's worth becomes so much higher. So it sounds like to me that what you guys are doing is you're having these wonderful conversations to discover what's important to the client mm -hmm. and what relationships are important to the client rather than we're great artists. Why not buy what we have? Yeah. Oh yeah. If you take that approach of simply your artwork, you're going to be hurting um, because practically everyone can create either great artwork or unique artwork that someone somewhere is going to go, okay, maybe it's not super technically proficient, but I like it. Everyone can create that. So what makes you different than everyone else? Well, it's you, you are your brand. And that's really what we sell more than anything else. Um, you know, I've made this comparison before when you go out to eat with friends and you choose a style of restaurant, you know, we're going to go eat Italian tonight. And so you've got three other couples with you and Susan, and you're trying to decide which Italian place to go. And one says, no, I trust me, we're going to go to this place. But you've been there before. And you remember, eh, it wasn't exactly my favorite. But you trust them and you go. But during that experience of sitting at the restaurant, while it may not be the tastiest of Italian food you've ever had, you see the owner come out and visit the table, reference your friend by name, connect with them. And that's when that light bulb goes off that, okay, I see why this is their favorite. It may not be because the food is better than the other Italian place that I like, but he likes him. He likes the owner. He likes that environment. He likes being referenced by name and feeling special. That's why they continue to go back to that place. It's no different with us. So Even though you just said you're a dork. <laughs> so I think what you're saying to us is that it's how you make your client feel, right? Mm -hmm. And for an introvert, giving like that, especially typically to a stranger, it can wear you out. But the benefits that we reap from that are immeasurable because that ripple effect goes out to their circle of influence. And that's where some of that deeper marketing comes into play that otherwise we couldn't reach. And it's a very long game to be sure. It is. And I've said before, the art on the wall is, is one piece of it, but every time your client looks at that art on the wall, they're going to remember how they felt in that moment, and they're going to remember the experience that they had with you. They're buying that feeling as well as the beauty of that artwork. And so I have to remind them of that feeling and I have to identify it for them even during the sale because then they'll recognize it where they might not see that on their own. Yeah, and that extends to that, well, even before that first interaction, how we present ourselves, our brand, all those things that people are watching. I mean, everyone watching right now has run into perhaps new people that says, oh yeah, I've seen you on Facebook. Wait, what? They've never commented, they've never liked anything, but they're watching. Their, your presence is being made known. Your brand is being made known. And that's that first initial uh, awareness, I suppose. And then that continues through interpersonal relationships on the phone. It continues through the session. Uh, we photograph together, Whitney photographs. I'm the light guy, um, but I'm also the one who's down on his knees with a two-year-old with snot nose crusted on their face, engaging with them because I know the parents are watching how I'm making that kid feel at ease and not the holy terror they envisioned that kid being during the session. It, it extends through all of that. How you make that client feel is incredibly important. 
I do want to say if a kid has a snotty nose during a session, I will wipe it before we take the pictures. Don't. <laughs> I will wipe it. <laughs> That's way above my pay grade. It's not service that we offer. <laughs> so do you guys then, will you, based on the conversation you have with the client in advance, right, that discovery piece and understanding what's important to them, do you tailor the actual location and the experience based on that conversation or is it, no, you come to my studio or I have this location picked. How, how does all that fit together? Well, the, the second piece, um, which is one of the things that we've added this year, which I think is a huge contributor to the increase in our sales, um, is that we are going to their homes at some point in this process. Typically, it's before the session that's preferable, um, but sometimes even when we're traveling and doing sessions, then we will go to their home to do the sale. And we just started noticing that every time we got into a client's home at some point, our sales shot up. Um, and it just, uh, there's a lot of factors that play into that. But if I can get into their home before the session, I can talk with them about the style of their decorating. I can talk about colors that they should wear. I can go ahead and predict like what kind of products I think would look good in their home and even talk about groupings. I'll photograph their walls. I'll even go in their closets if they want. And that level of not only service, but customization that we're able to offer. And expertise. That. And expertise too, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because you are wearing a different hat at that moment. You're kind of taking on the uh, persona of an interior designer right. or decorator. And that adds a, an extra layer of value to the entire service mm -hmm. because they're not having to solve a problem themselves of where do I do with what at this place or this place and there that 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 um, there's a shutdown that takes place mm -hmm. with a non creative type person and because we are visual artists we have an advantage of that even if you don't have any expertise in interior design you at least know colors and you know textures um, and you it's something you can actually learn mm -hmm. I mean goodness get a subscription to Architectural Digest or don't laugh, Sorry. House Beautiful or, you know, just different <laughs> design magazines and at least learn from the experts and go, oh, well, I get it now. I never would have thought of that, but I, I get it. Put that, put that arrow in your quiver and move on to, to help someone else out. But, you know, to your question 10 minutes ago, um, <laughs> that wasn't me, that that, was I know it's both of us. You're, you're good at this, Ronan. You're like pulling all this stuff out of us. Um, that is the point at which I would say, OK, based on the style of your home and where you're thinking of hanging your images, we might want to do a fine art session in studio or no, I'm seeing like the session we just did. I said, you're doing you did this. Your husband built this custom farmhouse door. Let's go find a cool barn outside. So we customized it mm -hmm. for their space. So that has to have advantages too, David and Whitney, in terms of, um, you know, often like if you came into our home, I'm sure you would discover places where we can display those um, images of important relationships that I'll never see, right? Right. Yeah. And when I'm there, I'm taking pictures of the wall um, with my little, you know, piece of paper taped to the wall for scale, and I'm putting them in ProSelect. And so when they have their session or their proofing and purchasing session, I'm showing them pre-designed groupings on their wall of images that are my favorite, um, the way I think they should look. And I'll show them four or five, six of those, depending on how many walls we have. And inevitably, they'll fall in love with one or two of them. And that's a great jumping off point for the sale. And it makes things a lot quicker, too. And you're taking away decision fatigue, right? Because my absolute nightmare would be sitting going through. So do you like this size, starting with the biggest, going down to the smallest? You're showing yes. what's going to fit that space, right? Yes. Yeah. And then we take care of the installation of it. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to worry about that at all. What, what we envision with them is exactly what they're going to end up with. And that, so I go in and install those things and they're completely hands off. Dads or the husbands love this because they're not the ones who are being nagged about, wait a minute, move it this way, move it. This way. You're the one being nagged. <laughs> I get, yeah, I get to be the hero. Well, I saw I saw a photographer the other day and he he had just started to do this, you know, the installation and display of the wall art that his clients invested with. 
And what he did was he went in and he, he knew where they had to go. So he went in and he did it. And then he made them walk in with their eyes closed. You know, he guided them in. And then there was a mum, a dad and, and a daughter. And they all had to open their eyes together, you know. And he got it on video, the reaction, you know. Yeah. And it was just, uh, it just told the whole story. And I went, that's it. You know, that, that, that just, you know. Hey, and the dad's reaction was, because you know the way, I meet so many photographers, I'm sure you're the same, and they say, oh, the husband kills the sale, you know, or the, the, the man will kill the sale, you know. Um, but that's not the case if you approach it properly. But this picture, it was the dad who had the greatest reaction, you know. It was, it was, it was oh, just wow. unbelievable to see. The so, you know, I think that's so, a really good idea so, because I don't, I, I can't imagine anyone getting their digital files and going, oh, look, I'm so in love with versus, you know, a, a marketing piece just to help to help bring more emotion into it mm -hmm. that people can identify with when they see that reveal. I mean, that's the, the, the home repair shows we watch. Mm -hmm. That's I mean, that's exactly what they do. They, they do all the work and then they do the big reveal. And that's the best part of the show It's yeah. kind of what we want to get to is and we don't even know these people, mm -hmm. but I, I can see the, the incredible value of that in connecting with future clients where they go, I want to feel that way. Yeah. What yeah. a great thing to post on social media. I and like that. Yes. We've done, we haven't done the reveal, but we do try to show a lot of completed artwork in, in people's homes. So when people are looking at our Facebook page, they're going, oh, that's what they sell. They sell artwork on my walls. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Ronan. Let's... Good idea, well, Ronan. We're, we're done now. <laughs> we got to get to work on some stuff. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> so. We're on this journey, right, from 4,000 to 5,000. And some people join us maybe on a journey starting lower than that, wanting to get to 5,000, right? So we've identified you need to know your ideal client and have that visualization of them and know where they hang out so you can make those connections. You need to have proper discovery calls to understand what's important to them. And then you're tailoring the whole experience around what you learn in that. And then we've talked about at the end, right, So where you take the... Um, where you take the wall art and you do the installation and you know ticking all those boxes and then getting into the client's home wow that's five things is it so <laughs> talk to me talk to me about something that we've seen in the market and tell me if you've seen it right how do you manage this, this desire for the quantity of quality images versus the wall display and they're not an either or right but I, a lot of photographers i meet you know, they're totally focused on what's going to be displayed on the wall, right? Mm -hmm. and, and yet, in all consumer research and what we're seeing in the market with a lot of photographers is there is this in, in built-in demand from the consumer to have a quantity of quality images. How do, how, how do you deal with that? Yeah, we talked about that this morning, in fact. Did, were you listening? Because it feels like you are leading us in exactly the direction that we were going to go. Because we said the three things that we think are important to having raised our sale are the quality of the client, mm -hmm. the experience that we give them, and then uh, the the pricing or the uh, items that you sell. So yes, this is exactly where we were going to go. <laughs> it's almost like when we have the three XM website open, there's a like Facebook is listening, and listening. then here's the ads to us. It's this is creepy, Ronan. <laughs> it's creepy. Well. So, so what you're talking about um, is exactly in my notes here, which is about shooting for the sale. Mm -hmm. So we need to know um, what it is that we want to sell our clients. And I always, um, you know, we when we coach people, whether it's through Tribe of Five, which you know about, or um, just individual coaching, we talk about what do you want your average sale to be? Because it's surprising to me how many photographers don't have any idea. Um, and then in addition to that, knowing, okay, what is an acceptable minimum sale for me uh, to be sure that clients don't go below that? And on, on the upper end of that, what's the highest sale I could potentially get with my pricing? Because you don't want to cap your sales either. You want to be able to get those you know sales over $10,000 because those happen. And boy, that's exciting. So for us, um, we want our clients to purchase wall art. We'd like them to purchase a grouping of, I'd love four images. Mm -hmm. 
And then we want them to be able to take the rest of their favorites and purchase either a 20 or 30 image folio box or album. So we are trying to show at least 50 images. And that sounds like a lot. And it is a lot because I think the common teaching style for, for years had been pare it down, pare it down, pare it down. And from a psychological standpoint, that there's a lot of value to that. Eliminate that paralysis in the decision making process. Mm -hmm. So when you weed it down, and that's great if all you're wanting to do is sell wall art. That really is a helpful model to use. But I think it's good to break those rules mm -hmm. and to when we want to sell more, we have to shoot more. We have to think ahead as far as how we're going to uh, Whitney diagrams out different locations in different um, um, poses and different things mm -hmm. like that, because she knows if I don't capture these, there's nothing I can sell or there's very little I can sell. Um, so we want to shoot in abundance. And so typically we'll show 60 or 70, which is a lot. And that can really slow down the sales process if you let your clients run it. Uh, we have to run that sales process for them. And we're not salesy at all. Mm -hmm. That is not in our heart to be a sales. We don't use catch words or wouldn't you feel bad if you, we don't ever no. use yeah. that salesy technique, but we do run the process. And when we do, our clients are grateful for that because they're in and out fairly quickly. Um, and they're getting exactly what they want. We're selling what we want. And that's that's the best part. And we're selling a lot. And this is where the folio boxes came in. And we've talked about this before. It was like the third leg of, a, of the stool that we needed. We just had wall art and albums, but we needed that third thing for clients who weren't really album people. And now we've seen an entire shift of nine times out of 10, we're selling folio boxes because they are unique they are a little more tangible uh, and they're a little more versatile in the ways we use them and so our ideal client that whitney has a name for uh, we sold four wall art pieces for him but we also sold a folio box and we showed it in a way that they could use those matted images in frames and be able to change them out and so I, we hung 13 pieces but a majority of those were 3xm mats in frames where we said, when your family grows, their grandparents, when you add more grandchildren, we can begin to, to change this out for you and it grows with you. And we that was a solving a problem for her. Yeah. Because I'd been in her house and I knew what the problem was, she ran out of wall space. Yeah. And if we weren't selling and shooting for all those images, there's no way we'd have sold that. We would have been pushing and that would have been insincere and just really not us. Right. So, do you know what the client prefers in regards to folio box or the album prior to the shoot prior to the experience or does that happen afterwards that's something that they have to touch yeah and feel and and we have to look at how many images they have and what's going to be the best fit and when they're looking at all of those options they're typically immediately drawn to one or the other um, and so that is not a huge decision that they have to make. Um, and it's really just either or. Do you prefer the box or the album? Once they've narrowed that down, they say, okay, I like the box. Say, okay, do you like the window or the solid? Do you like the wood? We're just giving them two choices at a time. So the decisions become very easy. And very quick. Yeah. That's what's great about it. Yeah. And if I know, if I've seen their home, if I know how they're going to use them, I'm not afraid to recommend one. I think a lot of uh, photographers feel like they're being pushy if they make a recommendation, but uh, you know, we've been renovating our home for two years and it, we get into situations where I've never dealt with, you know, buying a certain item before. I really want somebody to give me recommendations mm -hmm. and we're doing a disservice to our client if we don't at least say, if you're not sure, this might be my suggestion. Yeah, because and most of the audience will be women watching this and I haven't bought makeup in a long time, but True. I've seen enough as we walk through the stores and things are taking place where a cosmetologist is applying makeup and saying little lines like, oh, this matches your eyes. 
this matches your beautiful eyes, this, your lips are perfect, those types of things. And we've done modeling sessions where the cosmetologist will, will say that same. And there's a relief. You can see a visible, visceral relief in body language on the person going, oh, great. And that they're excited about that process now instead of being very, um, very tepid in their approach to a, a photo session, like, well, hey, I can rock this, that confidence that's being built simply because someone complimented them genuinely about about either their appearance or their home. You know, th this wood box would match perfectly with the Western art that you're collecting. Mm -hmm. Well, of course it would, it complements it, but they just needed to hear that little line that gives them permission to say, well, yes, let's do it. So can I go back a step? Because you mm -hmm. guys will will solve the desire for the wall first, right? With those four mm -hmm. images, and Whitney, you mentioned earlier that you know you let's say you've been in the home, right? So you've identified the space, you know the size, you've got your pictures, so you're all good to go. Do you start with choosing the images out of the sixty or seventy images that you first show as as a grouping within that wall art collection? Is is do you do that or do they go through a stage of picking their favorite images first? So it's just like with the um, folio box versus album. I'm asking very simple questions. And so um, we will find a grouping design that they like. And then um, if say they just want a single image, then my question becomes, do you want the whole family or just the kids for that image? So that helps us narrow down. And then maybe we took in a couple different locations and one might be better for the room than the other. Um, but typically that gives us enough information that I can say, okay, you just want the kids. So we're gonna go through all the images of just the kids and we're gonna see what you're most drawn to because I want your favorite images to be the ones that are the largest in your home. And then we're gonna work our way down and we're gonna fill in with the rest. Right. Um, and I should have asked earlier, Michelle, thank you for asking the question. Sorry, guys, that was very rude of me. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat and we will get to them. <laughs> um, so Michelle asks, are you using any particular presentation software, Dave and Whitney? Is there any? Sure. Yeah. ProSelect is what we've been using for, well, almost 14 years now. Uh, there's lots of great software out there. Um, ProSelect is kind of like the Microsoft Word of presentation software. It can do things that you would never imagine it could do some of it you would want to some of it not um so find find one that works best for the way your brain thinks and processes information displaying it um because some of may just be a, a one trick pony but they do that trick very well mm -hmm. so we utilize it uh, you don't have to go with the biggest and the best but pro select is certainly all comprehensive yeah. And all we are using it for is slideshow, uh, narrowing down to favorites, and um, room view. Yeah. That's really all that we use it for. Yeah. Sorry, Ron. <laughs> you can use it for a <laughs> lot more stuff. But... <laughs> yeah, I know. R R R I love when, when, when I get together with Ron and um, he, he says it can do all this, this, and this, and this. And I say, yeah, but what percentage of the population needs this, this, and this? And he says, well, you see, some yeah. people need this bit and some people need that bit. And I said, I get right. you. Yeah, I get you. I get you. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so they're solving everyone's problems, which is something we cannot do at 3XM. We can't solve everyone's oh, no. problems. But we, um, but nice. it's certainly ProSelect is built to do that. Um, and yeah. so, so Jennifer wants to know what do you charge for each size of folio box, but do you only offer, I don't know whether that's capacity, i.e. number of images or actual size of the folio box. So maybe we should deal with both of those. So um, sure. you guys only do 11, 14, right? You don't do the eight by 10 folio box or do you? We do. We offer oh, four options so, in get okay. uh -huh, mm -hmm. the 11 by 14 with 20 or 30 or the eight by 10 with 20 or 30. Okay. Um, and what we charge for that is, um, and we actually, the way we price those, we pair them with um, the equivalent album. So there are only three prices and it's based on image and size. So the smallest folio box with 20 images, the smallest album with 20 images is $1,800. Um, and then the highest, the largest folio box with 30 images and our largest album with 30 images is um, I believe $3,600. $3,800. Thirty-eight. Mm -hmm. Oh, thirty-eight. Yes, <laughs> and then the mid.
mid range is $2,800. That's where most people land. And that's why we put it there is because that's what we want to sell is that $2,800 album or folio box. And then we want to sell the wall art with that. Okay. And so you've got a, do you have people who will, won't buy wall art and will just buy a folio box or will only buy wall art and not folio box, box or album? Or does, does that happen often or? Okay, this is where things get really brilliant, Ronan. <laughs> no, this she is, says it humbly. Yeah, <laughs> humbly. Well, this is really valuable, and I, and I think um, this is one thing that really, really helps our sales, and also helps keep our um, proofing sessions down in terms of time. Is that um, we do offer the accompanying digital files, the matching digital files for whatever we sell. So if that's a 20 image folio box, it's 20 digital files. If it's a single wall portrait, it's a if they buy both categories, if they're buying um, something for the wall and either a folio box or an album, the combination of both of those things gets you all your digital files. So that is a huge value to our clients. It is you know, no cost to us except the editing time. And um, so that means probably 95% of our clients, I would say, end mm -hmm. up purchasing both. Now, when you when you look at our average folio box album size at $2,800, and even if they purchase our smallest wall portrait, that's $500. So we very rarely um, will have a sale under $3,000. And I think that is key for people to think about when they want high averages is you have to close that lower end loophole. Now, mm -hmm. when somebody's asking us about pricing, we have a low point of entry. So buy a mounted eight by for $250 and they can get the matching digital file. But if we're showing them 50 to 60 beautiful images, maybe they can cut that in half, but there's no way they're gonna walk out of there with one or two images. And if they do buy two eight by tens, it's five hundred dollars. They can get twenty for eighteen hundred. So it just it, it becomes in a folio box. In a folio yeah. box, mm -hmm. it becomes silly for them to make small purchases. It just makes much more sense for them to kind of move up that ladder. So, and that's been a change, right, in the last twenty four months or thereabouts. Because they used to have a system of um, you had mm -hmm. to spend a certain amount to get any digitals, right? Can you just talk, yes? So we talk developed the sliding scale. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We developed the, the sliding scale for digitals um, probably seven or eight years ago when yeah. we did our first IPS video. So I know a lot of people have learned that from us, um, and that worked very well. And I would say, uh, if you're if you're starting out, I actually think that's a preferred method because. It's not, it's not all or nothing. They're, you're kind of gradually moving people up. Um, and so what that means is if somebody wants the digital files and they buy zero product, the price for the digital files is say $2,000. But if you buy $500 worth of product, that price goes down to maybe 1400, but you know, add those up and it doesn't make sense to buy no product. So uh, then you get up to the top of that to where you want your sales average to be. So say it's $2,800 or 3,000. And at that point, the digital files become free. So when we did that, almost all of our clients were purchasing enough product to get their digital files for free. The reason we eventually changed is um, at some point, you're gonna be bumping up against that higher end all the time. And we felt like we were capping our sales. Mm -hmm. If we have done and had experience with sales, mm -hmm. because it, it does, again, it, it, we're not salesy at all. It's not a manip manipulation process. It's just a comfort level of understanding the client, their needs, and how to achieve their needs mm -hmm. and do it in a way that makes them go, I'm thrilled. And yeah, I mean, I'm dropping down a lot of money, but I'm, 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 ex I'm, I'm excited about this. This is great. If you're first starting out, that sliding scale looks more like a dangling carrot where you're not having to sell as as, as much. It's the client sees in, in, in a very real sense that if I spend this much, then I'm getting this. Okay. And they work it 
themselves. Mm -hmm. And so it, it keeps you out of the process, but it's still a good chance to learn technique. And um, so, yeah. Well, and you have to be able to say your prices out loud and not throw up. <laughs> you have to be able to say, yes, that, that piece of wall art is $2,300. And I say 2,300 instead That's of 2,300. 2, yeah. That sounds like more when I say thousand. So I say 2,300. Um, <laughs> and to, to be able to watch your client go, oh, and to not panic. You have yeah. to be able to just sit there with them and let them make their decision and let them kind of adjust. <laughs> and some people right now watching are having hives oh, and yeah. breaking out in oh. panic. So like, oh, no. I don't I, know. Yeah. Been there. Yeah, we get it. So M Mark asked the question then, which is asked about digital files and everybody approaches this differently. Right. So we understand that what they buy in print, they buy the digital or invest in the digital as well. Right. Regardless of where, where they go. Um, but the digital the digital file itself, is that a watermark low res for Facebook or Instagram or whatever? Or what, what is it? What, is it size to a certain size or is it? No, we, uh, we give them the full thing. Um, we understand that client's perception, potential client's perception, when they see it, we want it to be the best it can be. So if they choose to get it printed, we want it to be the best resolution possible. Now, to help combat that, what we've done is added extra value to the client. And when they do obtain all the digital files, we tell them, we're going to create a private gallery for you online, where you can share that with some family members if they choose to order more. And we've, we've priced the prints on there, 8 by 10 and lower. We call them gift prints. Mm -hmm. We price them what we call consumer rates. It'll be a little bit more expensive than Walgreens or a big box store price, but it's through our professional lab and we can guarantee uh, whatever you order, whoever orders it will be the way it's intended to be. So they have that guarantee. They understand it's going to be a very reasonable price simply because we know they're going to print them regardless. We want to make it easy and we want the outcome to be a very good quality item. And so they get that shipped, you know, directly to their door. Um, we also offer them the um, the mobile app mm -hmm. as an added value thing too, through through Shootproof is who we use. And so we can send that to them as well and tell them, please share this with you know, anyone in your family or friends. This is a great way for you to share these photos is through the mobile app. We could sell that if we wanted to. We've chosen to take the method because the way our pricing is structured, we're getting what we need to out of each sale. That's just an added value to the client. Um, and remember, the sale happens when the the value of what you're offering, the experience, the products, all of that is higher than the price to the client. Then no matter what that price is, and it could be pretty high, if the value is higher, the client believes they're getting a deal. Mm -hmm. And that's where we need every client to be. Our value has to be higher than that price, even if that price is 10000 or more. Mm -hmm. We got to have that value higher than and think, you know, it was a lot, but I got a great deal. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's also distinguishing yourself from the marketplace because a lot of photographers resist this whole digital piece, which I believe is a big mistake. And um, so you guys have, have figured that out and you're maximizing the sale based on delivering for the client what they want, including taking away that fear around, am I only going to get a low res digital? even though they probably would never do anything with the high res anyway, but that you're, you're right. taking that fear away. Right. If you give them a low res, they're going to try to print it anyway. Yep. And it's just going to look bad. <laughs> and make you look yeah. bad. Yeah. Yeah. So Jennifer wants to know, do you charge a session fee? So we did an experiment last year and did not charge a session fee. I just thought, I don't want any barrier to entry. I'm, I'm just going to, uh, and what I told them was, you know, I think my job is to create images that you're going to love. So I'm not even going to charge you a session fee. If I do a good job, you're going to purchase at the end. I don't feel like um, it was, I don't feel like that was necessary. I think all of our clients would have paid it no problem. So we have gone back to a session fee plus a deposit now. So they pay a, a good chunk up front. Part of that's applied to the session fee. Part of it is applied toward their purchase. 
So um, any more questions? Let me see. I think we've dealt with the digital files and we've, oh, what albums do you use? Guy wants to know. Um, we use Kiss albums. So Kiss albums. And um, mm -hmm. and you put the album beside, beside tell me this, because you mentioned that some people go folio box and some people go albums. Have you discovered why? What, what, who decides to go for an album over somebody who decides for a folio box? You did mention about, you know, the versatility of the matted prints to be able to put on the wall. But let's say somebody doesn't want to do that. Is what, What's the trigger for the album versus the folio box? You're asking this for your own research, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, so I'm so you know, <laughs> I, I feel like it's uh, it's very traditional people who tend to go with an album, or it, it might be like for um, a senior where maybe they have previous kids who have graduated and they're trying to match something they've already done, um, or it's just people who actually already do a lot of photo albums and find that they look through them a lot. But usually people say, oh, I'm so glad you have an alternative because we never look through our albums. Mm -hmm. They're very static, I guess, mm -hmm. compared to the the, the flexibility of a, of a folio box, mm -hmm. um, especially when we display them, we put them on an easel and that they, they can see, oh, that's what you do with it. They see and, the versatility yeah. of it as opposed to the album. Yeah. So Guy is curious about, um, you mentioned that you sell both the window folio box and you sell the uh, non-window versions, right? And um, what what clients go? Is it a 50-50 split or an 80-20 split? And then the second part of that question is, why do they go for a plane versus window? Is there a reason there too? I think in the last year, it's been 100% window, honestly, because it's an additional level of versatility because they see it as a display yeah. option. It's a frame built in, basically. Mm -hmm. Nobody has bought the plane box. So tell me this, does, does the window box ever interfere with the sale for the wall? No. No, because um, it is smaller. It, it, it doesn't equate in quality. The smallest piece of wall art we sell is a 14 inch. And even the 14 inch box is a 10 inch image. So it doesn't interfere. And I think distinguishing that with your clients is, is critical. They need to see that smaller sizes, those gift prints are one category. Mm -hmm. Wall art is something very different. And that's where you come in as the educator, as the photographer, the expert in educating them on face size, viewing distance, all those things that go into a positive experience when selling wall art. Stacey has a long question, so I'm going to read it all out. I'm interested in what you charge for deposit and session fee and what percent of the final sales average that deposit covers. I like the idea of clients paying more up front so that money is already spent and it seems that they're spending less during the ordering appointment. There's a long question. <laughs> this actually, uh, it, it is helpful to have that deposit because you know money spent is money forgotten and so uh, they're paying a session fee of 195 and they are giving a 500 dollars deposit so when they come in for their session they have enough to purchase one piece of wall art now i don't mention that deposit at any point during the sale unless i feel like they're kind of going back and forth trying to decide what they want to buy then i'll say oh, oh remember you have that $500 deposit and they'll go, Oh, okay, well then I'll go ahead and buy that. Um, so that really, I think has helped our sales um, increase that little bit. Mm -hmm. I just want to ask one more thing on the digital because there was, there was a little bit of breakup in the internet between us. So, um, so your very top offer, did I get it right that if you show me 70 images and I buy a whole load of wall art and I buy the folio box of 30 images that I'll even get the digitals gifted to me that aren't reflected in print or do they have to be reflected in print all this? All of them. All of them. So that's a huge value. 
that's a massive value. And I can see yes. how that will identify, especially as the consumers are getting younger and younger and younger. And, you know, we all quote digital Darwinism and they don't remember the world without Google um, or Facebook for that matter. So, 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 so I can see that as a big, a big, big incentive for me mm-hmm. to invest more, even if I may have been a bit reluctant to do so. Well, and I'll tell you when that really helps is when we are, if they know they're getting a 30 image box and we are having to narrow down which images they want in the box, they already know they're getting the digital files. So when we're deciding, I I can tell them, okay, now remember, you're getting all these digitally. We're just looking at what you want in the box. You're not losing it because you're cutting it here. And that is such a relief to people because if they think they're losing it forever, that would add an hour (laughs) to our sales session time. So Shanna Lee wants to know, what do you charge for the consumer price print? You said that it was a, a, a wasn't what, you know, that it was more expensive than if they brought the file to Walgreens or whatever, right? But it's it's not what you would normally charge for a matted eight by print if that's all they were buying, right? Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it's like five, ten dollars. It's it's we don't really make any money off of that. It's just enough to cover our costs and the shipping. And I, we have the kind of relationship with our clients that I will actually say, oh, please don't go print these at Walgreens, you know, and they, they honor that because we have a relationship with them and they respect us. Plus we've made it convenient for them. They don't have to upload them or do anything. They just go to the site that we send them. We want to make it as convenient and accessible as possible. Mm-hmm. So Mia asks, do you need to order the images for the box from a lab or do 3XM deliver the images in the box question? What paper is a good choice to use if I need to use an external lab? So let's just deal with the paper choice first and then maybe we'll we'll whet the appetite for something else maybe after you've done that. (laughs) So while, you know, I love, love, love the look of like the Fuji matte paper, but I do not order it for prints because it changes the color of them. And I can't, I can't know what that's going to be. So we just get luster prints, Mm -hmm. nothing glossy, nothing shiny. And um, I don't know, Ronan, we used to not be able to get prints from 3XM. Is that something we're going to be able to expect? Well, I suppose we should. We didn't plan to do this today, but um, yeah. So David and Whitney, not are the only dear friends of us, um, here in Ireland and they've been here to visit us and we've had great fun but um and we get on so long and we're aligned on so much but um we have been beta testing um supplying the prints in the folio boxes and David and Whitney have helped us out enormously with being part of that process and um, so it's coming soon is what we'd say I can't tell you when soon is but uh David and Whitney have been very happy so far right in our beta testing yeah Yeah. ordered it yesterday (laughs) i'm seeing the comments people are excited (laughs) good 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 david's excited because he doesn't have to like put all of those prints into the mats anymore (laughs) you see how big these fingers are to get in those mats and i don't have to do it this is great so i think you're using our luster paper right the luster paper in that that we're doing yeah it's not our luster paper. We don't make the luster. We don't make the paper, but yeah, it's the luster version of the print. Very good. So yeah. So um, is there any more? Everyone seems happy about that. Wow. There we go. <laughs> um, so yes. um, so and, and you know a lot a lot of photographers do print themselves. You know in studios. So we have we have the solution for all of those. So if you're you right. know if, if you're we have got the ultimate bat for those of you who may be doing reveal walls and need to if you're pre-printing stuff prior so you know we're going to tick the box no pun intended on both those requirements because because Whitney and David yours is pre-sold right everything's sold prior to you ordering the product so yes mm-hmm. yeah so I think you did a time analysis right it saves you about 40 minutes per order or something when we do the printing yeah. You're the, it probably does that probably is about right oh yeah definitely uh it's it's just that you're adding value to it and that makes us I mean, we wouldn't choose anyone else, but you know, we're gonna we're gonna stick with those who ha- are in the business of making photographers money. That seems to be the focus of what Three XM is about is uh, is making photographers three times the money. Um, 
That's it. So, That's where the name came from. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I didn't know if anybody knew that. <laughs> so, so tell me this, um, and we've mentioned, um, if you've got it, can you share the link to Tribe of Five in the chat if anyone wants? Uh, I'm sure there's loads of people who want to know more and, and sure. how to get involved. But the other thing, which is really exciting, right? Imaging 2022, you guys are doing a pre-con, right? Yes. Just give us, just give us a little flavor without giving too much away because the people can't book it yet, but just give a little favor as to what, what you're going to deal with in the pre-con or can you tell us anything? You know, we, po we posted uh, several ideas for classes and they actually asked us to speak on IPS. So okay. we are going to go back to our roots. We're going to um, do a live in-person sales session. We're going to talk about how we structure our pricing, how we take people through the experience and what that actually looks like in action. Okay. Excellent. And I think I'm it's a, uh, yeah. Like a three hour class. So a lot of time to dig in. I can't wait. I will be there. Oh, Jennifer has a final question. Do you mind clearing up if you charge 3,800 for a folio box and another 3,800 for the matching album? I think it's either or, right? But you've sold for the wall first for the display for the wall. Yes. Is that right? Either or. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So the sale yeah. is done for the wall first with an investment level starting at $500 up to... As far as they uh, want to go? Yeah, as high as you want to go. Yeah, yeah. I think on our price sheet, we may go up to like 9,000, but we can go higher. Yeah. And that's the thing that a lot of photographers really struggle with. Um, Whitney kind of coined this phrase that she uses a lot, especially when we give our time and services and people want to compensate us back. She's, she'll say, don't take away my joy. <laughs> And that just is a really, I mean, it's hard to argue that point too. It's like, okay, well then thank you. That's typically the response, but you can switch that around as photographers don't take away your client's joy. If they want to spend that, no matter how uncomfortable you get with large numbers, don't take away their joy. They may have planned for this. They may be are excited about this. They may have done the math in their head already about how they'll pay for it. If they choose to do that, then find a way to make it easy for them to do that non-apologetically with joy, experience their joy with them, which seems very foreign because we get uncomfortable with high numbers. But if your client isn't, then honor them and reciprocate that joy back to them in a very genuine and honest way. Honor them and let them give you a check for $10,000. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's a win-win. <laughs> Absolutely. And everything in life that's win, win, win. No, that's that's what works, right? If, mm -hmm. if there's a loss in there, it's not built for sustainability. Yeah. So, David and Whitney, thank you so much for joining us today. I love the amount of knowledge you guys have. I love um, talking to you. I love uh, having dinner with you. I love having a pint with you. And I'm sure we'll get to do that again soon. Probably the next time we, we actually meet up, we'll probably be at Imaging because we're still here. We're not allowing people to visit our country and if we go out we have to quarantine for 14 days but oh. hopefully when we come back so hopefully in a hotel and pay, pay two and a half thousand dollars for the privilege but hopefully that'll be all gone by the time imaging comes around so That's if right. it's still here ronan you come quarantine with us and we'll go to imaging together okay okay that's what we'll do. <laughs> that's what we'll do. so 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 thank you so much and um, guys check check uh david and whitney out on tribe for five we've shared that link right haven't we Yes, yes. tribe of five, yes. number five.com. Yes. There we go, tribe of five.com. And then imaging, don't forget when it's not available yet to book online, but when it is on the PPA website, make sure you book their pre con class. So stay yes, safe. Yes, and we stay also. Healthy. Oh, okay. No, go ahead. No, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. We're Sorry. going to be, well, we're also going to be doing a webinar for PPA. I believe it's August 3rd. And that's when we're going to be doing yeah. um, the marketing for introverts. So the follow PPA to, to find out about that. Or yeah. Ronan can tell you when that's going to be. Do, do, do. Make sure you, <laughs> PPA guys is great value. And um, their, you know, th their mission is absolutely aligned with doing the best for photographers. It's a not-for-profit organization. So do, it's it's great value. You know, the cost of joining PPA, you'll pay in in, in insurance cover. You will yeah. for your for your cameras and stuff. Definitely. So there's so much value there. So So do consider joining it. So stay safe, stay healthy, everybody. Thank you so much again, Whitney and David, for joining us. Good luck with the final senior graduation. When that's all done and dusted, it's so exciting. Yeah. Um, 
And uh, I know it's sad too. I know it's sad yeah. too. I do. I do feel. I do feel that too. Oh but uh, but thank you so much. And we'll see you all again uh, soon, guys. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you all for your business. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you all again soon. Bye thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Ronan. Thank you, panelists. <laughs> Bye-bye.